Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, and I'm here. Great on us. <laughs> we are uh, super excited to show you something that we've been building towards for a long time. This is an immutable booting infrastructure automation demo uh, where we're going to show you some Windows, we're going to show you some Linux, we're going to explain how it all works. Um, what we're doing is actually supported by a talk that, we're, that we've given, um, we're going to give at SRECon also. Um, talking about immutable infrastructure and how it works. A um, lot of detail in this talk about how this goes and I suggest you check out SlideShare and, and, and read the background of, of what we're doing and why. Today we're going to talk about the how because that's super exciting. Um, I'm in the Digital Rebar portal. I've already got a system up and running um, with a couple of machines in it and we've already gone through and installed Windows. Uh, we're going to get back to this environment and, and making it go. So I'm about to tear it down and, and then we'll reset it. But I want to show you this process because this takes a long time and it's a huge deal. It took 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 10 yeah. minutes. Zero to fully deployed Windows um, in this environment. Um, that's a major deal. Linux is even, even faster, so we're going to start with that. Um, so with, with no further ado, I'm actually going to shut this machine down uh, and we will, we will reboot it um, into, a, into a reset state. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, and that's, so that's this machine. I'm going to just go ahead and destroy it. I'm going to set the stage back to discover, let it go, and then uh, power it on or power it, reset it. You have to power it on. I you powered it off. I powered it off. I need to power it on. All right, power on. Let me actually pay attention to power state on some of these. There things. you go. So here's this one. And then I have another machine in the background. So that's that one booting up. This one, I powered the other one off too, so I actually need to go back and get this machine in the same thing. So sled stages discover and power that one on also. Not both of them, just the one. My mouse is a little cranky. All right, so now I've got two machines booting into a completely fresh environment. And if you're used to digital rebar, um, and if you're not, go, go watch some videos. We talk about workflows quite a bit. We've got a Discover VirtualBox Sledgehammer Wait, mm -hmm. which sets machines up in a I'm ready to go, do work sort of state, which for immutable booting is exactly right. Do you want to take a second and explain what immutable boot means, or should we kick through and then explain it? Let's start something and then explain. I like that approach. Take a little longer. Okay, so what, what we've done is we've installed a plugin. We'll show you all that stuff. Everything's ready to go except I haven't set the profiles on the machine. So we've got two machines that are basically boot discover. We've got them. I flagged one as Linux and one as Windows because the win Windows one needs a lot more disk space. So it's useful to know. And so for this, we're going to take this machine and we're going to run an immutable image on it. So I have to go in here. I have to actually tell it that this is a Linux image install, which is good. We'll get that done. All right. Yep. And then I just start the process? Yep. That's all you need to do. All right. So over here, we're gonna, I'm going to show you something. Uh, this is the machine that's doing that, that image. It's, you can see it's in Sledgehammer over here. We're going to pop that back on screen in a second. And I am going to go ahead and set the stage to Curtain. So we're using an open source technology called Curtain Under the Covers so to speak. Um, and all I have to do is change this stage and you can see it's already in Curtain. Let's bring up some, some status windows. Woo! It's doing a lot of stuff in the background here. And is it going to show us anything? Is it just, just no, sitting it's there? It's just going to start DDing the image over. It's going to partition the disk and then DD the root file system in place. DD is the Linux direct, transfer. Yeah, direct copy of one image into the disks. So we've got images that came from... You can go actually look and see at the process and the jobs. Oh, so okay. if you go look at that. the jobs... So if you jump in the machine, we're going to see over here. Uh, let me get the... It's already done. Oh, oh, oh. It's done? We like mm -hmm. Linux yep. installed done? Yeah, done? it's done. It Talk too long. It's going to reboot. Okay. And Which is what it's done. Up. Okay. And at this point, it's booting into the root file system that we DD'd over and uh, booting off of the this it's pulling in SSH keys um, the way we have it set up currently is um, the image we have runs cloud init and so we have a stage that does cloud init files and serves those files 
And so what happens is we send the SSH keys as part of the cloud init requests. So you're, instead of having to run SSH access stage that we normally do, um, the cloud init will pull those keys from the SSH, the same access keys parameter and stuff. So, so wait a second, this is confusing, because this is not a cloud. This is a, a, a VM on my local desktop, right. not connected to the internet, could be a physical machine. That's right. Cloud init? I, there's no cloud. What am I initial? Well, and so cloud init is just the name of the program that knows how to talk to various cloud instances to pull the initial config for the system to boot. So what we've done is we've written a stage that serves the files as if it were in the cloud so that you could take the same image, right? Because DRP has a, a, a HTTP provisioner that's template driven, yeah. so we can we can do that cloud network. So if we look at the stages real quick. But it's done, I mean, the, it's, uh -huh. it's already done. done. So and we didn't have to kickstart or pre-seed? No, in fact, it's already called, it's already hit the phone home part inside of the OS to, to let us know it's complete. So, so, so not, only did we, not only installed it, we actually have some post-provisioning logic that tells mm -hmm. Digital Rebar it's done. We so put a DRP CLI runner in place so that it can immediately call and set the stage. Well, we put the CLI in place so it can set the stage to complete to indicate that the process of imaging is done. You could also set it up to run a runner and all of that stuff, but for this pass, it's just setting the stage to complete indicating done. So then that could send an event out to another system and you would be able to close a ticket, notify a Correct. user. In fact, we use it in Terraform to indicate that the device is, the machine is now imaged and has achieved its done state so it can then go on to run the rest of its Terraform task. So let me be very clear. If you're looking for a two minute boot cycle to get things up and running, this does that and notifies you that it's done so that the next steps can keep going. Super fast installs. And so, for example, the cloud init part, we serve the files for the system to look like and pull data from, right? So you can actually pass in your own traditional cloud init INI file. You set it as a parameter as user data and then we'll do that. In this case, we're not actually sending anything. Um, it also knows how to pull in certificates. Um, we name it, and then in this case, we by default pull in the access SSH keys as a public keys available to put in as the root. So everything that you need in Amazon or a VM system to immutably boot ISO, you know, AMIs and things like that, we actually can take an image out of Packer, take it as a raw disk, mm -hmm. and do the same process on metal. That's right. That's big. That's huge. So that, that's what happened. Okay. And it flew by in less than five minutes. And we're now complete, right? And so the system's up and running. It's done. Um, in this case, the, the machine looks like it's not runnable because, well, we don't have a runner running in that environment anymore. Oh, okay. So it's just... But we could, and then we, we could, could keep taking post-provisioning steps. Yeah, that's right. All right, so that's pretty cool. To make that work, we have a profile. You saw me assign it, this Linux image profile. Um, and that tells us what Linux... So we tell the OS type because we have to do different things if we're Windows and Linux. And then... <laughs> And then we have an image type to describe what the actual install image looks like if it's a tarball or a, a raw disk, a compressed disk image, which we'll look at here in a second. And then here's our packed, uh, packer built image. So um, we have um, packer is used to build it. We build the image, it then sucks the root file system out after tweaking a few things to make sure that it could then run on some other system than it was built on. But nonetheless, that's basically just a big tarball of the root file system. Cool. And you said packet. This works on packet too? Packet as well. Yeah. So I mean, people can play with it. this way too. So, um, one of the, so in this case, this is the image file that's getting deployed. You could actually set that on the machine and then each machine could have a distinct image if you want. Correct. Okay. You can choose to image however you want. And so we have one for Windows, which we're going to do right. next, which was used to build that other machine. And so in this case, Windows, Curtain, and then this is the file that we're using as the uh -huh. source. In this case, for Windows, notice we use a DD TGZ. Basically, it's a compressed tarball of a raw disk. So um, that way we can pick up all of the booting stuff that's needed to run Windows. So let's see. I'm going to go back in. Let's do the, let's kick off the Windows one because uh, it takes a little bit of time and then we can talk a little bit more. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to shut down this other machine just to free up some, some memory on my, my system. Power off here. But there we go. 
Goodbye. And then this one, which we have ready in Sledgehammer Wait. So it's currently running a Linux, our Linux uh, discovery yeah. image, waiting for tasks. And for that one, I can go in, set the profile to Windows. So that's going to pick up those parameters on the system. And then all I have to do is set the stage to curtain to start that workflow. Same thing. And here, uh, we're going to... We're not going to really see much on this side because we're DDing to the disk directly. Okay. Well, it means that somebody mounted it and discovered some partitions. But um, if you go look at the jobs again, okay. you'll see we're in curtain install. So here's now, the this one takes a little longer. The, the raw image that it's compressed but it's still a six gig image versus a 500 meg image. So it takes longer. So instead of taking the minute or whatever to download, it's gonna take five to 10 minutes to get everything downloaded, repartitioned, yeah, five minutes right there. Re 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 so I, can, I can refresh here. And this is a live log. So I'm actually, I can actually get real data. I could, I could watch this from an API. I could pull this data back sure. and we're gonna know how far along this goes if it breaks. We'll find out. Yeah, and so one of the things that's interesting about this pass is that while on the Linux side, we partitioned up front, then put the image in place, put the root FS, right, retard that, un untard that into the partition, and then set up grub to boot the system. Okay. In the case of Windows, we're going to DD the image. It has everything it needs to boot, but it's now a small image. What we then do after that is, in the case of like Windows, we'll resize the partition to use the full size of the disk. Right. So the way our, our Packer image is built for this process is we created a Windows install in like a 50, uh, 35 gig disk image. But that's not what I have on my machines. Okay. I have a 135 gig or a 200 gig or whatever. Yeah. I want to use the full space. Right. So what happens is we DD the thing and then as a, the image, and then as a post process, we resize that NTF file, NTFS file system to use the whole disk. Okay. So while in this case we're sending the, the six gig image compressed, it's gonna uncompress itself into about 35 and then we'll resize okay. it to the full I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up, I'm gonna, the event window down here is gonna give us some heads up when, when the process is continuing because we'll start seeing a whole bunch of events. Uh, in the mean, while we wait, what we're, what I want and show a couple of this. So we have a that's delivered through a plugin. Uh, make it a little bit more. Make it non. Curtain, right? Curtain has some interesting nuances, and <laughs> there's some things that we would probably like to do it. A couple, couple ways to do this. Um, but so there's a plugin, and then that plugin actually brings in. Uh, some parameters and profiles and stages just like any other uh, system and so usually we start from a plugin we want to look at the stages that it's added so in, in this case there's two stages mm -hmm. a curtain in and a, a cloud knit curtain right. which is we talked we talked about cloud knit and then um, so if you look behind that is it worth investigating these yeah I mean bit? we can look at them the should look I pick at curtain, curtain first curtain. sorry go ahead and pick curtain first I'm just taking a bit of resources on my machine. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so there we go. And so in curtain, we're going to do um, some tasks. We're going to make sure that we have some SSH keys in place so we can debug it. Uh, while we showed curtain flowing through, you can actually use curtain as an initial starting stage. So you can boot directly into the curtain stage. So I could literally just have my machine. But there's a, there's a real advantage to putting things in discover wait, and actually that starts the process right away. That's right. So if I really want to cut time off of my installs, That's having right. the machines in discover, sledgehammer wait means that as soon as you send that start signal, it goes. it's going. Um, All right. So. And here we build some config files, we put some for debugging in place, and then we have a bunch of files that let us finish and finalize installs. But then we get to the actual meat of the task, the last two, which represent our, um, make sure the curtain tool is up to date, and then the other is to actually install the process. It looks like it has some different logic depending on Windows, Windows and stuff. Windows. For example, that finish one is the phone home script for, oh, okay. for VRP. 
so it gets put in place and the system calls it. And these are just standard templates. Mm -hmm. um, and they're attached to the, the, the plugin. So literally, if we version the plugin, you're going to get new templates, you're going to get fixes for things. It's right. The DRP standard is we, we like to take all this content and we treat it as a single artifact so it's easier to manage and control and patch. That's right. Um, so that's, that's this, and you know, there's a whole bunch of scripts behind the scenes. The other thing that was important here is we uploaded some files mm -hmm. uh, because what, what we're not going to an external system to capture the, the image. You're actually pushing it into DRP, and then it serves that image directly. So Today, you, you, yeah. We may change that going forward, right, to let you serve, have your localized file servers provide those images, but right now they're served out of the ISO directory and DRP. So both are beneficial, right? If I have a build process with a local build server, then serving it out of the local build server means that I can kick off a build, tell Sledgehammer to pull it down and be, be up and running within sec you know, minutes of when that build is finished. Or if I have a distributed data center, then I might say after the build, push, test it, push it, test it on a VM potentially, yeah and then push it to my data centers at the DRP endpoints by uploading the files using the DRP. Right, and it, it all depends on how much storage your DRP endpoints have versus your file servers, right? If you have copies of other repos, whatever, right? It all depends on how you want to run it. But right now, the, the curtain install path assumes a ISO location, but we can prob we'll probably change that as we go to make this more generally available. That makes, that makes some sense. And then, ah, okay, and then the DRP CLI. So the CLI is the runner, and so if you want this, this handoff at the end, we have to inject that into the image during the, the, right. the, the DD process, and so it has to be available so you can pull down. So we have multi-architecture yeah, uh, right. plugins, and that's, that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, are we, what, are, what, are, what have we not talked about? I'm stalling for time because we, we're just about Let's at the 10-minute uh, mark for the... the uh, oh, in the case of our Windows image, we also have a Cloud Init-like process enabled there as well. It's called CloudBase. It's it's the Windows equivalent of the Linux Cloud Init. We're okay. getting closer, but, you know. Um, and so it will do the same process of running and trying to pull a Cloud Init and go through that. And so as part of our workflow, if you look at our workflow. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the workflow. I don't think we've really pulled that up yet. So we have a workflow that basically says if I'm in Curtain, then once Curtain's finished, transition to Cloud Init. Right. And, and reboot, reboot at that transition. So once, cur once Curtain's finished, the runner will reboot the Sledgehammer image. Okay. And as the system boots up locally, Cloud Init has the local boot environment set, and it'll it'll serve files. Now what's interesting is the stage service fi serves files. So the, 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 the stage, stage is itself. serving. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And, yeah, because stages can serve files just like boot environments, but in this case, we're having the stage serve them. Because it's not changing a boot environment, it's doing work Correct. inside of a boot environment. That's right. It's a subtle, subtle distinction on, on that. That's right. um, and, and then, then and, and so it would be possible for us to take Discover, and chain these things together, and just rip right through that whole process. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we're, we broke it apart because for demos and so we can choose things to make it a little bit more standard and easy to reset. Yeah. But if you were in a big data center and you want to do image-based deploy, deployment, you would just set things up to go straight through this process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a common, like if you were doing an immutable infrastructure pass, what you could do is you might choose to have your golden image named golden, right, or as you go forward, and then, or a link to that, and then as you needed to reprovision these systems, you would set their stage to discover, reboot them, and then they would come up with a new image. Wow. Would it be possible if I had a, okay, I can't DD back onto myself, so that would be a different, okay. So I, I can't, I can't, I need to go through this reset, re You have to recycle. at least get to Sledgehammer to actually run the tools right. to image the system. That makes perfect sense. And so we should be at a point, let's check in on the workflow. And one thing to point out, this is super exciting work. This is RackN work. This is stuff that, that RackN has added into Digital Rebar. Um, it, we're not, this is not open source com componentry. 
Uh, there's a lot of complexity. We need to work with, com with customers to help build images in the right way. And um, if you're interested in this technology, this is a get on the phone, email with us, um, get engaged. We're happy to do it. We've been working very hard to make this a turnkey type of experience. Uh, and there's a lot of pieces and parts that you have to get right to make it work. So, um, The image construction is usually the, the challenge. And then integrating into other other process, ninety nine percent. Yeah, it's finished. The Windows install takes a little bit on the end because it has to re. Which is why we started with the with the logo, so you could see, hey, this is actually a Windows system that's been booted. Because even now, it's going to go through another reboot. It's going to go through mm -hmm. before and, and yeah, we'll the Windows image that. needs to reboot itself a couple times to get it all set up correctly. But um, but yeah, the last couple percent take a minute or two. I don't think we have live updates on that one page. The list itself will get updated when, when it changes. But, all right, so I think we're, we're just, now we're just watching the paint dry waiting for this machine to clock through. And so on this screen, you can actually see the process. As soon as it finishes this, we're gonna get a live update. Um, and then we'll, it'll go through the next stages, which are really waiting for the reboot and the check-in to, mm -hmm. to complete. Okay. And one thing to note is this is kind of our first pass at it that we're using and as we discover more we'll like I said rename it and then for example right now the curtain and, oh, there you go just finished the and as it reboots we can pop that up um, as it goes through we may choose to split some of the installs into a few more stages and stuff like that so that we can actually have a little more fine grain control and not be as dependent upon things as we are right now it makes perfect sense uh, so one thing to note, if you're interested in this process, right, the thing to do is to start with just a regular digital rebar download and portal, right, everything you do is progressive with this. So learning how to boot provision a machine is the first step. Uh, so go to portal.rackend.io. Discovering machines is getting to that step and then from there we can... Right. And you'll note there's multiple reboots here in the Windows install process. Um, this is why we have the, the finish thing. You can't just ping the NIC and assume that when it responds, you're done, because you're not. Right. You really, the, the way we have the process structured with the phone home at the end is a very important component for figuring out how to make that, that actually do its thing. Wow, and uh, if, you, if you're used to Windows installs and you've done it like with a USB key or an ISO and you're used to, I get it running and then I have to download patch and patch and patch and update, mm -hmm. what we just showed you, end-to-end -end Windows deployment um, inside of it, this 10-minute window is a very significant step. Um, one that we're very proud of uh, watching work and we think changes the way data centers uh, can be operated and managed. Yep. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and uh, we're looking forward to talking to you more about immutable infrastructure. Thanks.